Right, so whilst I wait for the fuses and things to come, I've uh, I've just uh, bolted all of these down finally, coach, coach bolts. There's three on one side and three on the other. And then once I can get this up high enough, I'm going to get a long piece of metal that goes all the way under the car, all the way under this side. And I'm going to bolt them up in the same beams so that there's absolutely no chance of any lift at all. Now um, I've done some deep bolts on here. I haven't bolted it under there just yet, but I have a feeling that once I've put these bolts in, which this is bolted to the chassis, um, it's not going to lift anyway. But uh, as I say, I may put that may put those bolts in once I see how sturdy it is. But right now, now it's bolted, it's pretty solid, just like the seats were, where they had the two holes in there. And uh, and you're gonna if you ever do have an accident, you're going this way anyway. So if it's secure at the back, we should be okay. Um, but that's that part all set up. I'm going to put the batteries on only after I've done the connections down here, which I'm waiting for the Molex plug in the post, which I may not be able to get done until Monday. So um, I've just got to wait for that. So other than that, I'm almost there and um, it won't take long to put the other batteries up and wire the fuses into there. And then I can get the seat on, check everything's working and it should be ready for its MOT. I've been questioning um, how I'm going to sort out the BMS on these modules and um, there was a few options. I always lent the, um, the, the BCM, the battery control management system, in case I could get that working in a string of six but I just had a thought and I contacted Tom Debris last night who makes the SIMP BMS and there's a chance that he may be able to do something with these modules. Um, so I'm hoping that he can. I'm going to send him some photos later today. Um, but uh, as you can see on the front here, if I pull this off, there's a little plug just inside. I don't know if it will focus. Yeah, it's being awkward, being very awkward. Why won't you focus? Strange. Anyway, um, I've got this little board that came off, um, and this is the thing that manages the cells. You see these pins. You see these pins just on on here. So these pins all link up. Most of them link up to the each cell on the module, so you can read. A voltage listing off of these individual, um, off these individual segments, and uh, this would have controlled the main. This would have controlled the main, uh, the main BCM. Well, the BCM would have talked to this, and and this would have individually balanced the cells. Now they're originally wired up by these little connectors, and. Um, they were strung in series all the way along the bank and they had some extra connectors in here which are little thermistors for telling the temperature of the battery modules, the battery cells. So what I'm hoping to do is either Tom's going to get a communication working for these little things so that they can talk to the SIMP BMS or the other option I was thinking about was trying to find the plug that is on here and just wire up my own BMS somehow because if I can find this plug you can talk to all the cells easily, you can contact all the cells easily. So um, that's the plan for the moment. I'm going to probably send it to Tom because he's going to have a better idea of how it works and uh, hopefully we can get the SIMP BMS working with this. So I was looking at ways to hook up this 12 volt fan that's inside there. Now this fan, when switched on, it puts an airflow through that cools the charger over here while it's charging. Now um, the one way is to connect this up to the 12 volt via a switch. And um, that was what I was going to do originally, but then I thought to myself, I want to make it automatic so that whenever you plug the charger on, 
it automatically turns on. So what I've actually realised I had, I was going to buy one on eBay, but I've got an old light that I don't use. And it has this inside it, which is a 240 volt, um, 240 volt um, transformer, and it will uh, and it will put out 11.4 volts at 5 amps. So that's plenty to power the fan. And this is going to, and this is going to go onto. This is going to go somewhere around here and this will hook straight into it via this plug right here. Now um, whenever I turn the mains on that will come on automatically, start up the fan along with the charger and I won't have to think twice about it. So that's the plan, you can pick up one of these for about five quid on eBay, the square box ones, and uh, that will do the same job. So yeah, that's what I'm about to do now is to get that all wired up. Now what I'm wondering is whether 240 volt comes out here without having the EMS plugged in because one of these leads will have 240 volts coming out of it and that's what goes to the heater so what I'm thinking of doing is using one of these existing connections which already have a fuse in there um, I'm thinking of using one of these existing connections to connect to this so that I don't have to go all the way around here and wire up over here into 240 volts. I've got the plug. I've got the charger plugged in. Um, I was trying to find out why I wasn't getting any live off of any two of these connections. Um, basically, the charger's not coming on, which I think is simply due to not having the battery terminals, terminals connected and the contactors, and the, well, and the um, and the capacitors pre-charged. Um, but what I was trying to do is find the 240 volt circuit here. And um, what I realised is that this little unit here, even though it has a minus and well, even though it has a red and a black connection, what it actually is is connecting into here, which is actually joining the neutral of the 240 volt together into this module, which is what disconnects and connects whenever it needs to heat up the batteries. So I've just been testing this and what you actually have is this, these two here, red and black coming out here to these two plugs, is the positive and neutral. Now if this terminal doesn't fall out while I test this, if I stick that into here, what we should see is 230 volts coming out. So there's the, there's the correct cabling if you want to get 240 volt power out of these two terminals. So what I'm probably going to do, just for the ease, is to get the old, I should have a old heater module somewhere. Um, well, there's two options, old heater module, and just bridge the two connections so that it's fused still. Um, yeah, so it's fused up here, so that fuse is still intact. And, and what I'll do is connect that, Let's just plug it straight into there and that closes the circuit. And then I can use the other plug that was originally going to the heater mats, that will then come off and that will give me the power into this unit here. Now I may not be able to do that today because I accidentally locked the shed and someone else has the key that's not here. Um, so I may not be able to get that done today, but that is that is the plan that I'm going to go ahead with. And that will give me 240 volts that will power on whenever I switch the charger on through the mains and that will put out 12 volts, power the cooling fan and uh, and that will keep the charger cool while it's running. So I've just plugged this in um, but I'm not getting any voltage out of the 11.4 volt side. 240 volt is fine. So I'm wondering whether this is dead because um, the lights weren't working too well in my room before so I am wondering whether that unit is actually dead, so I may have to buy another unit anyway. But otherwise, that's all wired in. I um, Instead, I just disconnected this link that was there and wired that in so that the fuse is here. And I've just joined that connection right there, so I've closed the circuit. And I decided to just butcher this one because um, the heater isn't really used and I don't think I'll be reselling this little thing here so I mean worst case you can wire it back up via these terminals here but 
I don't think that's going to get used again, so I decided to use it after all. Um, but yeah, so it looks like I'm not getting any 11.4 volts out of this circuit, so unfortunately, out of the transformer, so unfortunately this is a no-go, but the idea works, I just need to get myself a another transformer to do the job. So, let me just check this. There you go, 12 volts. Now what I've actually done, um, the other one wasn't working, this bit, this one is completely dead, unfortunately, um, that doesn't work, but I realised that I will have one of these lying around, they're everywhere, um, if you know where to look on appliances, this is an old BT um, transformer out of a modem, and I looked at the voltage and it takes it down to 12 volts, so that's perfect, now it's only one amp, so I'm hoping that's enough for this fan. This fan isn't that large, so we should be okay. But let's just give it a quick test. Here is the moment of truth. There we go. So it's bringing, it's pushing air in, and that trans that little unit's working quite well. So there we go. That solves that. So instead of having to buy one, I just need to wire a plug into here. I've got a socket somewhere. I'll just wire the socket in, and then I'll wire this. I'll wire this to the socket and that will power the transformer. So here we go. I've just screwed a piece, I've just screwed a, um, a plug. I could only find a double one, so unfortunately I have a spare plug right there, but I mean, three amps, I could run a little bit off that, maybe, maybe a phone charger or something, I don't know. Um, three amps, hmm. I mean, what I might do in the future is to actually bring that plug socket above the board and instead of wiring it up to that terminal with the 3 amp fuse I might try and wire it up into this terminal down here and what that would give me is the full spectrum of the 13 amps I've got my 12 volt, in 12 volt inverter that I can easily wire back up to the 12 volt coming out of here um, so I might do that instead and what that will do is give me that will give me the ability to um, charge my laptop, things like that, straight off the 12 volt inverter while I'm parked up charging. Um, we'll see. I may try and get a feed coming up there, but then also I'm not sure that I'll use this original wiring when I get up to charging on the road. What I may do instead is to get myself um, the faster chargers and I'll wire in a Type 2 socket, that completely separate circuit from this. So that's the other idea. I mean, it's not it's not a big deal, I can change that up if I need to, move it somewhere else, but for now it's great just there, and if I flick this switch, I have the fan. Perfect. I also just realised um, I forgot the calculation, and at 3 amps, 240 volts because that is the 240 volt side you actually have 720 watts at the disposal so I may actually be able to uh, to use the charger on here no problem so what I may do is put a little lead going out of here over the top I don't know but I also I should be able to still reach underneath here so I may be able to get a plug through there so cover is in and it turns out that there is plenty of space to reach up there so I could potentially put something in if I wanted to and decided to but um, let's say non-essential I cannot quite get to the fuses in there so I think I've just got to make sure that everything in there is doesn't go over the rating and then I'll have no need to get in there and um, it's going to be a job of unbolting the batteries pulling the floor out just so I can get into that back end 
So unfortunately there's no room to put a flap up this end because I need to bolt down to here. So there's no way, there's no space and I think the batteries, looking at how I've set this up here, they are going to take up from here all the way down to this down here. So what I'm probably going to do is to build a box, build a box into here and then um, build it over the top so that I've got a second platform and that second platform will be where I put all my luggage and everything. Um, that's how it's looking, that's how it's looking um, once I get the batteries in. So yeah, that's, I think that's everything that I'm going to be able to do today. Um, I've done a fair bit, I've got, I've got the wiring all sorted out ready for the, um, ready for things. I've planned the wiring, um, what I'm going to do when the other bits come. And then we should be able to get the charger functioning uh, maybe sometime early next week. So I don't think there's going to be much more going on until then. I was going to do some modifications on the seat, but I think I'll wait getting the seat in until I've got everything wired up properly and I've got all the fuses wired up so I can all, so I can get down here properly. But yep, so that's some good news. I've got the fan working. I've um, I've also put all the coach bolts in today, as I mentioned earlier in the video. So uh, yeah, it's been a I've made the most of the clear day that we've had. So I think now I'm just going to go and relax and we'll wait for the other parts to come in the post.